Good morning. You are with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Uh, we are meeting this morning with a member of the House Appropriations Committee. Um, Maida Townsend, thank you for being with us. And um, if you would like to uh, help us understand the, the couple of changes that the Appropriations Committee is uh, recommending on H449, we will take a vote. Okay, thank you very much. And for the record, uh, Rep. Maida Townsend uh, from South Burlington uh, here on behalf of the Appropriations Committee on H449. Um, I would be remiss if I did not say at the outset a huge thank you to your committee and to Rep. Gannon in particular, as well as um, the fiscal analyst from JFO and um, the attorney from Ledge Council on this bill, substantial hours and substantial patience that all three have provided uh, House appropriations as we worked on this bill. Um, I also would re be remiss if I did not say to uh, House GovOps that in the process of working on this bill, we did go through the entire bill. Um, with the help from our, our three folks whom I just referenced. And we are very well aware that there are uh, fiscal issues throughout the bill, um, some of which pertain to uh, costs applied to the, uh, the, the retirement systems themselves and some costs applied to the general fund. So, I just wanted to assure you that we are aware of all those separate pieces and have looked at them all and discussed them. So ultimately we came together on um, our proposed amendment, the language of which does show in today's calendar uh, on page 1156. And uh, we have a piece that, uh, we start off with a piece that applies to VPIC in section three, and it uh, proposes to include house appropriations as receiving the report uh, required in section three. This is the report that um, change, that, that studies how to uh, change BPIC from a committee to a freestanding entity. Uh, given that this incorporates budgetary authority hiring and compensating personnel and such issues, we believed it appropriate for House Appropriations to receive that report. Um, even though as things stand presently, VPIC related costs are borne by the respective retirement systems, we do not know how things will proceed in, in the future. And uh, we, we believe we need to be informed. So that's with regard to that piece, section three. The rest of our proposed amendment applies to the task force. And the first piece is section 10, sub C, sub one. This is the powers and duties section uh, for the task force. And we propose adding a new section, J, with, uh, at the end of the list as, as proposed by House GovOps a new section J, which uh, calls for the modeling and estimating of costs. If the uh, retirement benefits to VSERS and VSTERS members were not changed, if the retirement benefits were not changed for members of those two systems within five years and also within 10 years of the current retirement age. Um, uh, we, th we thought that that would be important information for the, um, for the task force to have in front of it. We further propose recommending in that uh, section related to powers and duties, a new sub two. Uh, this is the section where House Gov Ops uh, proposes um, that the task force make no recommendation regarding assumed rates of return. House Appropriations proposes to add to that prohibition 
the prohibition also that there be no recommendation to change retirement benefits for members of VSERS and VISTERS who are current retirees or within five years of the current retirement age. We were given to understand in our consideration of the bill that this had been um, part of the, the general understanding, but we felt it important to make that understanding explicit. And then um, also in section 10, sub E sub two, this is the assistance section uh, with regard to the task force. We have, we have with uh, the help of Ledge Council crafted language that clarifies how the $200,000 is handled. So you see there the proposed A where the Joint Fiscal Office is tasked with executing the contracts for the independent benefits expert and the legal expert as necessary to provide the support to the task force. And B, that no more than $200,000 in general fund dollars is appropriated to the General Assembly for that purpose. The reason it goes to the General Assembly is that uh, the, the expenses for the Joint Fiscal Office are a component within the legislative branch budgetary line items. Um, and then sub G, also in section 10, uh, we just felt they, that the task force was gonna need a little more time. So we propose adding a couple of weeks and change the date to September 15 from September 1 for the re final report of their recommendations. And we propose also adding that House Appropriations receive this report um, since, uh, since there may well be uh, fiscal impact uh, to the funds of the states involved. Uh, and that is it on that amendment. House Appropriations voted 11 0, 0. And just to make sure that you're aware, um, with this amendment from House Appropriations, we voted 10 1 0 in support of 449. And I'm open to whatever questions you have, of Thank course. You. Thank you so much, Representative Townsend. We appreciate the, um, the time and care and attention that your committee gave to uh, looking at this important bill. Um, committee, do any of you have questions for Representative Townsend? Representative Higley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Maida. Maida, uh, in regards to the section where appropriations uh, put in a piece uh, to not change current retirees' pensions, uh, was there any information from Ledge Council about uh, the legality of that anyway? I mean, um, the, um, the issue of uh, the issue of there being a question that there could be potentially legal questions around this, that, or the next change were brought up. We did not have any uh, intense discussion about this, that, or the next would be the uh, offset if if trying to if seeking to change uh, re current retirees' benefits were actually to be moved forward. Uh, we just want our bottom line as a committee was to make explicit that we thought there needed to be guardrails to assure people currently retired and very close to retirement that they would be held harmless. Thank you, Maida. And I guess if I could, one other question, the one member at the end uh, that voted uh, no on the overall bill, um, was there a particular reason given or is it well, you, you know, we don't talk with regard to motivations of others, um, but anyone watching our YouTube recordings would see that we had a great deal of discussion about the degree to which there were or were not, um, I'll call them guardrails or 
could be called limitations on the, uh, the, the sphere within which the task force was operating. Um, there was a great deal of discussion over, um, it would have to be in section 10, since that's task force, where there's, uh, I have a mental image, I'd have to call up the bill, but there's a small uh, Roman numeral I and or Roman numeral one and, and a small Roman numeral two with regard to the targets and um, reducing uh, the ADAC, uh, the, those two sections. Um, Rep Gannon, I, kicked up, I bet you can tell me exactly what page that's on to help your colleagues here. Um, but we had a great deal of discussion about those two sections and wh whether or not they should be included or not. And there was also discussion within the committee as to whether or not we wanted to include the language to make explicit that the, um, the benefits of current retirees and those within five years of retirement should be off the table. Well, th thank you for that, Representative. And again, I, it's, I'm sure that Representative Gannon uh, understands that, but I, I think it was important to uh, uh, maybe have a heads up as to what might be coming our way on the floor, but uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the question. All right, other questions from committee members? So Representative Gannon, since you are the keeper of this, um, I will uh, let you have the floor for a moment and, and uh, help us uh, understand your perspective on these changes and you can make the motion. Sure. Um, you know, thank, thank you very much, Representative Townsend, for coming into our committee today and explaining the amendments. Um, uh, you know, I was, you know, lucky enough um, to be, to, to be asked by the chair of appropriations um, to participate in the lengthy discussions about this bill um, over the course of a couple of days. No, I appreciate it. I mean, appropriations asked a lot of good questions. We had a great discussion. Um, you know, appropriations is always a very civil place. I mean, everybody's just trying to do what's best for the state of Vermont. Um, so I, I appreciate the discussions. And, you know, I, I'm very supportive of the changes that were made. And just to sort of get to Representative Higley's question, um, the one member who, who voted against the bill, I think, was really concerned about the specificness of the targets to reduce the ADAC and the unfunded liability. Um, that was really the primary concern. Um, I, I, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I think other than that, she was fine with the bill. Um, it, it was just with respect to those targets. There was a lengthy debate in appropriations around that and around putting in guardrails, which appropriations did. And I just re would remind the committee um, that when the chair and I put in our first proposal with respect to benefit changes, it also um, excluded um, impacting retirees and people within five years of retirement. So it is consistent with what we originally proposed. And so I would move um, that we um, find this amendment from appropriations favorable. Excellent. Um, any committee discussion? You guys are really fast this morning. Excellent. All right. Uh, thank you, Representative Townsend um, and Representative Colston. If you're ready, we'll go ahead and take a a roll call. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I shall begin the roll call. Gannon. Yes. Mariki. LeClaire. Yes. Hooper. Can you read his lips? <laughs> no, not quite. Yes. Not with the beard. You got to be closer. You. Thank you. <laughs> Colston, yes. Anthony. Yes. Behovsky. No. Lefebvre. I certify this is Representative Lefebvre and vote yes. Thank you. Higley. Yes. 
McCarthy. Yes. Couple of nonces. Yes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, one, two. Well, no, that's not right. Nine, one, one, two, three, four. Nine, one, one. Yeah. There we go. So let's uh, let's hold that open and see if Representative Merwicky makes it back. He had a, an urgent appointment this morning and said he'd be a few minutes late to committee. So uh, we may get okay. one more vote on that before we break for lunchtime. Uh, Representative Townsend, thank you so much for your work and for being with us this morning to help us understand your amendment. Thank you for having me. Have a good rest of this morning and good afternoon also. Well, thanks. See you later. Bye, Miguel.